The next comment reads, God bless you and thanks for this great opportunity. My questions are, reading Ezekiel from chapter 40 and on, the prophet describes a future temple in Israel. This building is going to be constructed next to the actual Muslim temple, or it has to be destroyed before. In chapter 43 and on, the prophet describes blood sacrifices. Why again sacrifices of animals? Please excuse my English, I'm a Spanish-speaking person. Okay, so Revelation chapter 11, please. Revelation chapter 11, and we're going to look at verse 15. Revelation chapter 11, and we'll be looking at verse 15. So, she brought up a very good question. So, God, He will one day have His temple on the earth, His own temple. And that Millennium Temple is described at Ezekiel chapter 40 through 43. So, I'll just write this down. We're not going to turn to these, obviously. But in case some people don't know about that, I'm going to write it right here. In these chapters, it discusses about the Millennium Temple. Now, when God sets up His temple in the Millennium, the question is this. So then, the Muslim Temple, uh, is it going to be built next to it? Because as you all know, the Muslims are the ones claiming that spot where the Jews have their holy site. So, will the Muslims still be around their temple? Or will it be destroyed before? So the answer is, it will be destroyed. It has to be destroyed, and then God's going to set up His temple to replace this. Because look at Revelation 11 and verse 15. The Bible says, And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become what? the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ, and He shall reign forever and ever. Amen. So, all the Muslims' great holy sites, they're going to get mad about me saying this, but it will happen. God's going to replace His kingdom over their kingdom. Woo! So they will have to be destroyed. They will have to be wiped out. So God's holy site will replace that. Now, she brought up another question, which is, go to Jeremiah 33. Jeremiah 33. So she brought up another good question. So because God is going to have this millennial temple again, they're going to have the sacrifices. So when they have these sacrifices, the question is this. When they have these sacrifices, will the sacrifices continue? Yes. But why? Why will the sacrifices continue? Because the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ, it done away all those sacrifices. So because we have this sacrifice, why do we need to continue these sacrifices? As a matter of fact, if you look at the book of Hebrews, if you look at the book of Hebrews, you're going to notice that in the book of Hebrews, that the sacrifices are supposed to be done because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Yet why will they continue at the millennium? That's a question. Well, the answer is, if you look at Jeremiah chapter 33, Here's the answer. Sacrifices were done as forgiveness of sins, right? That's what the sacrifice of Jesus Christ was, correct? Amen. It was done for the forgiveness of sins. So the forgiveness of sins is the one that replaces this. But you got to understand this. Is sacrifice limited to only forgiveness of sins? Or does it include... Praise and worship. Mm -hmm. See that? Sacrifices, when they built altars that time, it wasn't only just to confess sins and to receive forgiveness. They did it for many things. They did it for special occasions, memorials. They did it to worship God. They did it to praise Him, etc. So because God deserves all the glory and praise, that's why they would do sacrifices, but not for forgiveness of sins. So look at these verses. Jeremiah 33. <clears throat> Jeremiah chapter 33, and we'll look at verse 11. The Bible reads right here, The voice of joy and the voice of gladness and the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the voice of them that shall say, Praise the Lord of hosts, for the Lord is good, for His mercy endureth forever. And of them that shall bring the sacrifice of what? Praise into where? The house of the Lord. So at His temple. When? 
For I will cause to return the captivity of the land as at the first, saith the Lord. So this is a future time period. So at a future time period where they have a future temple, hey, so what's that future time period, future temple? It's this one right here. They're going to offer what? Sacrifice of praise and worship. Also look at Isaiah 66. Notice that Isaiah chapter 66, the Bible shows, so all the Jews will do the sacrifice of praise and worship, but also the whole world, the whole world. So 18, 20, and 33. Look at Isaiah chapter 60, and we're going to look at verse 18. The Bible says, For I know their works and their thoughts. It shall come that I will gather who? All nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. So this is talking about a time period where all the world are going to gather together and see God directly. Well, when will God be directly on earth? That's a millennium. So at the millennium, the whole world will go after God. But they're going to offer this because look at verse 20. And they shall bring all your brethren for an offering unto the Lord out of all nations upon horses. Look at verse 23. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to what? Worship before me. See that? That's why they're bringing the sacrifices. So, excuse me right here. It's actually verse 23, not 33. But you'll notice right here, see, that's why they all bring the sacrifices. As a matter of fact, didn't you know even Christians continue on their sacrifice? Mm -hmm. It's a sacrifice of praise and worship. Amen. Hebrews 13, verse 15. The Bible says, let us offer ourselves as a sacrifice of praise and worship to the Lord. Romans chapter 12 also says we give our bodies as a living sacrifice to the Lord. So you see, sacrifices continue. But the thing is, the sacrifice on the forgiveness of sins is done away with because it's based on the sacrifice.